What's up, guys and girls? Welcome back to the channel. I know it has been a while. My apologies. As some of you guys know, I got into the engine program with BNSF, and that is what has been occupying all my time lately. Uh, a few weeks ago, I got back from Kansas City after being there for three weeks. Uh, originally, I was gonna, I was kind of planning on doing some videos, but figured it was just probably better for me to focus on that, and we can do these videos now. So first and foremost, thanks to all you guys for being patient in your support, and all you guys that came up and spoke to me and recognized me down there at Kansas City at the training center. You guys are awesome. It's very humbling. I appreciate y'all's support and taking the time to come up and say hi. So figured where I'm at now in the OJT period, figured why not let's talk about the program a little bit. You guys have been asking me a lot of questions and sending me messages. So Three, here we go. Two, one. All right, so before I get started, remember this is BNSF's LETP program. I'm not familiar with the other class ones and smaller railroads training programs and requirements to get into their program. So please keep that in mind as I go through the video. I, I don't have any experience with those other companies, just with what I've been going through recently, last six weeks or so with BNSF. So, LETP stands for Locomotive Engineer Training Program. Um, BNSF's program is about 20 weeks long. I've broken them up. I'm, I personally call them phases, um, which is three sections, and it involves online work, observation trips, uh, time at Kansas City, and then your OJT trips to take what you've learned in the weeks prior and apply them and actually get out there and work with engineers and download their experience. So phase one uh, consisted the first two weeks, uh, the way it's currently structured. And it's a lot of online coursework, a lot of rules review um, over G core air brake and train handling SSI. Um, this is where we get our first introduction to train handling, different inspections, air inspections, things like that. And you're really just kind of getting the PowerPoint and the rules over that and taking some quizzes. Um, for me personally, I think it took around 11 hours those first two weeks to complete it before Kansas City. And then we had to have four starts uh, kind of as a welcome to the training program. Um, first time behind behind the controls with a, with an engineer. Um it's really an observation period. It was pretty cool. Uh, first time being there. Um, but again, you at this point, you really haven't had any true training other than the rules review, but it was still cool to get out there and get to see where some of these things are applied that we're learning. Uh, the second part is the phase two, which is three weeks in Kansas City at BNSF's Technical Training Center. Um, and I'll go over Kansas City more specifically uh, in another video because I feel like those three weeks have enough information in them for their own video. Uh, but the best way I can describe it is think of a conductor cram school in three weeks uh, and you start deep diving into rules you learned during conductor school new rules, uh, new processes and procedures as a engineer. Um, and it covers everything from day one, right out of the gate. Uh, again, we right back over air brake and train handling, uh, special system instructions, G core, um, things of that nature. And then they start adding everything else in, uh, that's involved in being an engineer into the mix as well. Uh, and then sim runs, uh, starting week two, start doing daily sim runs, ha half the days sim runs, half the days, you know, coursework in the class. 
And then on your final week, you have an exam, it's pass or fail. Um, and they did tell us we have one retest attempt after 30 days. Guys, these guys aren't joking around. If you fail that test in the retest, you don't have a job. Something to keep in mind we'll talk about later on. And then the third phase is your OJT trips. You take, you go back to your terminal and you take everything that you've learned over the previous five weeks and you do a boatload of runs um, with engineers on different trips, different jobs, things of that nature. And for us, I think it's a total of uh, 63 total starts. Um, and it's, it's again, uh, a pass or fail. You either complete all your OJT trips or you could be in jeopardy of losing your job. So uh, it's definitely been a very fast paced program. My impression so far is that it's pretty well done. Now, yes, Kansas City is about passing the test, uh, the rules, the regulations, the, the sim runs, all of that is it is preparing you to take that FRA mandated test. Personally, I thought the uh, instructor staff down there at TTC uh, was very well invested in our success. I don't mean by that, like, hey, they're going to give us the answers to the test. In a way, they did by means of any question you want to ask. You know, they'd hear it out. They'd get answers. And, you know, they drilled in scenarios into our head nonstop every day. Honestly, by the time Friday rolled around to take that final, I felt as prepared as I could and going into that test. The expectations are very high, and yeah, there's there's a lot riding on passing that test. I mean, it sounds cliche, but you really do get what you put into that course. You know, if you're involved in the classes and asking questions and, you know, really diving into it, you're going to get that in return. Um, I, I know there were some students there while we were there that didn't really seem all that invested and didn't ask questions, didn't really seem like they wanted to study right out of the gate. Um, and I don't think they did very well. When I was there, there was a total of 60, and then there was 10 uh, students in my class specifically. And uh, they had us all divided up. You know, my thoughts on the program so far is, well, it's been enjoyable. It, there's been a lot of hard work. There's been a lot a lot of study and still continuing to study and keep certain rules and inspections and procedures fresh in my mind as, you know, as I do these trips. Um, but it has definitely been a huge step in my career with the railroad and I'm glad I've done it. And I would strongly encourage anybody that is on the fence about uh, putting in for this program to go ahead and do it. Uh, I know that it's going to take a couple of years, most likely, for me here in Amarillo to be able to hold the seat full time. But with that said, I can take the knowledge and experience I've learned from this entire course and apply it to my work as a conductor. And I think it's going to pay off dividends in the long run. You know, how I work, how I get things done. Uh, definitely taking new considerations into play when I'm going to be on the ground now as far as trains handle. I mean, th things down to how I'm giving car counts now. You know, it's a it's a totally different perspective on, you know, moving and working with these trains that I have now. And it's continuing to grow. And the engineers I've been working with have been very supportive um, they seem as a whole very much invested in your success too, uh, from the standpoint of one of these days, you know, they may be working with us as a fellow engineer. They may be working with us as a conductor. At some point we're going to be on the rails together and they just, they want to make sure that the guy that's behind those controls isn't going to turn around and get them killed with their train because they're either being stupid or didn't take shit seriously. 
So hope that answers those questions, guys. If you have questions about the program, I'll answer them uh, the best I can as I'm still going through the courses or the uh, as I'm still going through the course. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for all your support. We'll catch you on the next one. Here we go.